Alright, what's going on guys? So, today we're going to be taking a look at Bodie McBoatface. I don't know if you guys are aware of what Bodie McBoatface is. Just a couple years ago, there was this major poll that kind of went viral online. The British were naming this new boat that they were going to be using for scientific research, and this poll was going around, and it went viral simply because of the name that actually won the vote. I remember when this happened. It happened in, like, I think 2016 or something. And the name that won was Bodie McBoatface. And uh, I never thought that this would ever come back up. This was something that literally was just kind of pushed into like the darkest depths of my mind. It's 2019. I've never thought about it before, you know, anything happened. And today I see news is up with Bodie McBoatface and I was just, I was floored. It's just been repressed for like three years now. And I was just shocked. I was like, I have to make a video about this. So I want to give you guys a little bit of backstory in case you don't remember what happened with the whole Bodie McBoatface thing. So like I said, uh, what happened with this was they were bringing out this new auto sub long range class of these AUVs or autonomous underwater vehicles. They were going to be using these for scientific research, primarily for climate change research, which we'll be explaining a little bit more further on in this video. This was going to be owned by the Natural Environment Research Council and operated by the British Antarctic Survey. Due to the complexity and the extended range, the NERC is classing it as an auto sub long range autonomous vehicle. Well anyways, they opened up this poll online to basically anyone to vote on and they wanted everyone to kind of name this ship, right? Well with this poll being open, Somebody suggested that the name would be uh, Bodie McBoatface, and uh, this name got 124,000 votes. Now, of course, this name, I think, was to be on the main ship itself, like the big vessel, of course. But, of course, the British government wasn't going to name this huge ship Bodie McBoatface, so instead, they decided to name one of the smaller vessels on board, one of the remotely operated undersea vehicles, which would be tasked with collecting samples from the deep water, uh, Bodie McBoatface, and instead named the big vessel after David Attenborough, which his name still got 11,000 votes, so it wasn't like they just picked a random name or anything. I mean, his name was still pretty popular, obviously, but, I mean, Bodie McBoatface was obviously the most popular name. It, it definitely was, I mean, uh, not, not to make a stupid pun or anything, but literally blowing all the other names out of the water, so. Bodie McBoatface took its first expedition in April of 2017 to study the depths of the Southern Ocean, and by doing so, in its first expedition, Bodie McBoatface kinda made history, and made a major climate change discovery, folks, which, I mean, that's actually pretty awesome, so. During this first expedition, apparently Bodie McBoatface uncovered a key process linking increasing Antarctic winds to higher sea temperatures, which in turn fuels rising sea levels. Researchers went through the data and they found that the higher winds cool the water at the ocean bottom and it forces it to move faster, which creates turbulence and it mixes with the warmer water above. But one thing I do want to go ahead and point out here is that the scientists said that the process has not been factored into their current models for predicting their impacts of spiking global temperatures in the oceans, meaning forecasts should be changed. So whenever they do kind of, I guess, input all this data and what they know now into whatever they have, this is going to make some sort of impact. Obviously, they have all their data and stuff from the past and everything that they've been collecting over time before has made some sort of impact now. But Bodie McBoatface, whatever it found down there, all the data it collected and that process that it apparently discovered was actually so important that it literally is going to change the climate forecasts for climate change. Apparently the mission was 13 days long. Bodie McBoatface also traveled 112 miles through mountainous underwater valleys, measuring the temperature, saltiness, and the turbulence of the water at depths of up to 13,000 feet. Professor Navira Garabeto, the research leader from the University of Southampton, was quoted as saying, our study is an important step in understanding how the climate change happening in the remote and inhospitable Antarctic waters will impact the warming of the oceans as a whole and future sea level rise. Eleanor Frashka Williams of the National Oceanography Center said the data from Bodie McBoatface gave us a completely new way of looking at the deep ocean. The path taken by Bodie created a spatial view of the turbulence near the seafloor. Pretty cool thing is, is I actually found the original article from back in 2017 about the maiden voyage. This was pretty cool to see. I mean, wow, that thing doesn't look that big, actually. Uh, 
I mean, just kind of like using my eyes to scale it. Yeah, here's a, yeah, there's a picture of it. I mean, just looking at it compared to that guy, it doesn't look very big. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I just wanted to make kind of an update video. For those of you who remember, I don't know if you guys do. I know, um, I remember it because it was pretty big when it happened. It, it was pretty viral. It was all over the internet. But, uh, um, I don't know if you know this or not. This was pretty cool. Um, Bodie McBoatface not only has it made history in climate change discoveries, but apparently has also created almost like this chain reaction of naming things uh, after almost like this this pattern. So Bjorn Baker's team at Sydney's Warwick Farm Racecourse caught wind of the crowdsource named Bodie McBoatface and decided they pay homage to naming their new team racehorse Horsey McHorseface. A new train on the Stockholm Gothenburg line was named Trainee McTrainface. Sydney Ferries had one named Ferry McFerry Face. <laughs> <laughs> Megabus's United Kingdom operation hosted a Twitter poll in late 2017 for a Volvo B11RT Interdeck coach that had Mega McMegaface win. In March 2017, the Isle of Wight Council, which operates the Cows Floating Bridge, which is a chain ferry across the Medina between Cows and East Cows, stated it was open to suggestions from residents for a new name for the vessel after originally registering it as Floating Bridge Number six, okay. Despite, uh, what is it? Council officials ruling out Floaty McFloaty Face as an official name, a petition was later created to name the vessel Floaty McFloat Face, attracting 2,000 signatures and even caused the council to rescind its decision to veto the name. In 2016, Google released a grammar parsing software package which they named Parsy McParse Face. In December of 2018, Formula E team Mahindra announced the name of their new car, which was Electro McElectro Face. You get the point. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on my channel. Follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on over there. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. If you'd like to become one, you can do so for only $5 down below by hitting the Join button or the Become a Channel Member link down there in the description. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus. McOptimus Space, signing out.